It's the 2021 Mexican Grand Prix. After a 24 month break, we are back in the capital. The last five races of the year with 12 points between them. Mexico City starts off a triple header for Formula One. The biggest we've ever seen. Mexico City to Brazil isn't that bad, but Brazil to Qatar in just five days is going to be the biggest long haul ever in Formula One. We're nearing the end of the season though, with Saudi Arabia making very quick progress to try and host its first race on the 5th of December. A week later though, Abu Dhabi will round out the season and under the lights on the 12th of December. In the Drivers' Championship, there is just 12 points between them. Max Verstappen leads the title after victory in Austin, Texas. Lewis Hamilton trails by 12 points. Bottas is ahead of Sergio Perez at the moment as well, but just one point between Perez and Norris in the battle for fourth place of the Drivers' Championship. Charles Leclerc is in a battle with Carlos Sainz's own teammate, Ricardo Gasly and Fernando Alonso round out the top 10. They are separated by a staggering 229 points as well after these 17 races. On the second page, Esteban Ocon leads Sebastian Vettel as well, 46 to 36 on 26. His large stroll as well, an amazing run of points between them. Yuki Tsunoda still 14th, he's four points clear of George Russell, who in turn is clear of Nicholas Atifi by nine. Then we go further back as well and get Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi as the last points payer. Mick Schumacher, Robin Kibitza and Nikita Mazepin are still pointless in the 2021 season. In the Constructors' Championship, everything stays the same for the third race in a row. Mercedes lead Red Bull Racing by 23 points. McLaren and Ferrari are closing in between them for third and fourth in the Constructors' Championship. Alpine, AlphaTauri and Aston Martin, the only ones close enough for the battle for fifth, ahead of Williams who have seemed to have secured eighth. Alfa Romeo have ninth and still pointless, Haas three points down on last year. It's the 2021 Mexico City Grand Prix, and this is your Grand Prix preview. Hello everybody, welcome to Mexico City, the Autodromo Hernanos Rodriguez as well for round 18 of the 2021 World Championship. We've had 17 thrilling chapters of the Lewis Hamilton Max Verstappen title fight and here in Mexico City it really is anybody's game. Hamilton has won here most recently in 2019, Verstappen however has taken two victories in a row in 17 and 18 as well. Both of those times were Lewis Hamilton clinched his fourth and fifth world championships. This really is the ultimate battleground for these two and their rivalry throughout the season. Last time out, 400,000 spectators in Austin, Texas were treated to a magnificent chess match between the two. Pitting early were the two Red Bulls that gave them a strategy advantage for the rest of the race. It all came down though still to the last lap as well and Verstappen holding off Hamilton at just a second as they cross the line. It really is a thrilling title fight this season. As we come into Mexico City, we're in a track that advantages Red Bull more than it does Mercedes. We have a total of three races in a row as well for the third time this year. A grueling triple header that takes us from Mexico City in Mexico to Interlagos at Sao Paulo, Brazil to Doha in Qatar as well. It really is the biggest and logistical challenge we've ever faced in Formula One. Three races in three weekends and three more thrilling chapters of the season. But first, let's take a look around this circuit of Mexico with the Red Bull on lap attack. <laughs> Let's take a look around the Autodromo Hernández Rodríguez in Mexico, a 2.674 mile circuit, 17 turns in total with three DRS zones. Your top speed around this lap time, over 175 miles an hour. On board with Max Verstappen in the Red Bull, down, open the control line to start the lap. A long 900 meter run down towards turn number one. You reach a maximum eighth gear at 347 kilometers an hour before slamming onto the brakes. Third gear, 120 kilometers an hour into the right, then the left, and the right again at turn three. 
exit power, sixth gear, 235 kilometers an hour, max it out to 320 kilometers, eighth gear for the braking zone for turn four, second gear, 105 kilometers an hour, double apex, four, five, and six. It all tightens up, second gear, 90 kilometers an hour, down to 75 kilometers an hour, back on the power before he comes through the S's sections as well. Sixth gear, down into fifth, 225, rise it up. Right at the exit of these two corners as well, you're gonna be doing sixth gear at 240 kilometers an hour. Open up the DRS as you head down towards the Foro Sol Stadium as well, before the Peril Tarder. Heavy on the brakes, third gear, 130 kilometers an hour, back on the accelerator, second gear, 80 kilometers an hour as you pass between the two of the baseball stadium stands into the power tarder now as well get back on the power and exit fourth gear 190 right to the line eighth gear 305 and that is a lap of the autodromo hernanos rodriguez here in mexico 2000 meters above sea level Okay, let's get into the Thursday news then. And as it starts as well, the Pirelli tyre compounds this weekend, the C2 for the hard, the medium is the C3, and the soft is the C4 tyre compound. Pirelli also announced during the week that their tyres for 2022 will be reduced at selected events. We understand it's going to be sprint races as well, where there are going to be three to four tyres of each set available to each driver, cutting down 13,000 tyres that are taken over from one season as well cut that right down to around about 10,000 which doesn't seem a lot but still it's good as Formula 1 tries to reduce its uh, carbon footprint as ahead of the net zero by 2020 uh, five as well. Let's hope we can do it as well for Formula One. The biofuels coming in, the new power unit regulations is looking cool as well. On the new power units as well, Volkswagen, who power Porsche and Audi, seem to be coming into Formula One. Porsche have laid down a mark saying we will enter Formula One if this happens. Once again, we've heard it numerous times over the decades to get Porsche in, but this time looks like they've signed a waiver for their commitment to enter as well as Audi. So two more teams Teams, two more German teams on the grid for at least 2026 is going to be absolutely fantastic. It takes the lead up of the field to 24 cars. We have not seen that since 2011 before HRT demised ahead of 2012. Going into this weekend then as well, it's going to suit a lot of cars, mainly as well. The battle between the two Ferraris is the key thing as well. Leclerc versus Sainz both trying to go top dog for 2022. We all know it should be Leclerc. However, Sainz is really finding something in the field this year as well. He's clawing in those points. He's adjusted best, I think, to the new team. Arguably Ricardo, but he's still having a yig-yag season, isn't he? Top in Italy, right down at the bottom in Russia. It's been a roller coaster a season where Sainz has been consistent across the board just as his teammate has of Charles Leclerc so I think he, definitely Sainz wins the award for best adjustment to a teammate. Talking teammates, who's going to be teammate across with Valtteri Bottas next year over at Alfa Romeo rumour is it's now going to be Antonio Giovinazzi, Guan Yu Zhou and, and Colton Herta were in line for the seat looks like negotiations are stored there it's mainly stored on the side of Colton Herta because Salba who own the entry to Formula One, who are sponsored by Alfa Romeo, were looking to sell the team to American investors as well, none other than the son of Mario Andretti, Michael Andretti, and Andretti Autosport. Looked like they were going to take ownership of the team. We now understand that negotiations have failed between them as well, but never say never in Formula One because there's another team as well who looks like could be taken out. Haas F1 look likely that they might not be there for 2022 under the Haas name. It could be Ukulari Rich Energy. Yeah, remember Rich Energy, that fraudulent team as well? Uh, the team sponsors that we had back in 2019 with the copyright logo to uh, White Spikes as well and the weird uh, owner of uh, William Story as well. Looks like they're trying to make a resurface name as well. Not sure how truthful it can be but we're expecting announcements uh, then again we've been expecting announcements of them for absolutely ages about a possible re-entry to Formula 1. They're a bit like the USF1 team as well. Just one tweet they've got on their Twitter account saying we will be back with more news soon. 11 years later, still nothing from the USF1 team as well. But I doubt Rich Energy are going to return to Formula 1 as well. They seem to be making quiet success sponsoring uh, bikes locally in the British Super Championship as well. The British Super 
super bikes and also uh, here are they on road races as well for motorcycles and a few in the British Touring Car Championship as well. So, moving on then, away from that, coming into this weekend, rumour penalties for Sonoda, Stroll and Norris coming in as well to take engine penalties at this circuit. Seems the best to do so. It's quite easy to overtake here as well. The elevation change as well affects engines that are old and poorly, so maybe brand new one in should be a good sign as well. It's going to be a crazy weekend, and that's all we've got at the moment on the news. I'll have more for you once we know it uh, from the press conferences as well. That'll be coming up as well. Uh, we'll talk about them more in free practice one tomorrow so that's it for the Grand Prix preview uh, and all the news we've got so far uh, this weekend as well let's take a look at the times we'll be on air this weekend We'll be on air tomorrow for free practice number one at 5.20 British Summer Time. The session, it will be underway at half past five. Free practice two takes part as well. 8.50 British Summer Time, we will be on air. And you can join us at 9 p.m. for all of the action. Saturday, qualifying gets underway as well. Eight o'clock British number time, but the race on Sunday, you can join us at 6.30 for our half hour build up show as well for the green light goes at 7 p.m. for the Grand Prix. And you can also join us for the Grand Prix review as well on straight after the race as well. It's going to be a crazy weekend this one. We've also got MotoGP coming up as well at the Algarve Grand Prix in Portimao. And remember as well, uh, Remembrance Sunday, pop is on as well all weekend here uh, on the British broadcaster side. So expect to see them popping up on Sky and Channel 4 as well. Well, thanks to you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for free practice one and two for the Mexico City Grand Prix of Formula One. Bye for now.